Ours I will resend the link to him again. I have sent it to him three times in the past 20 minutes, but I will send it again. Thank you, Mara. And we are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the finance meeting. It's December 3rd. I cannot believe it's December uh, 637. And I'll call our finance to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very, very much. We'll go into our agenda. And I'll first do a roll call. I know Council Member Gully is joining us any minute. Council Member Ash McPherson. Present. Council Member Steele. Present. Council Member Cummings. Present. Council Member Zalewski. Here. Council Member McDermott. Here. Council President Mantello is here. We have six present awaiting one absent. Uh, approval of minutes. I'll take a motion to approve the last finance meeting minutes. Motion to approve the minutes as produced. Thank you. Council members, Lewski motions. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Council member Ash McPherson, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 6-0, approval of minutes. Presentation of the agenda. We have one ordinance and uh, we'll walk through that. It is uh, delaying the relevying of many fees and fines. We have a public forum. No one has signed up. We have no local laws. We'll go into Ordinance 96. Ordinance authorizing the city controller to not relevy certain unpaid city of Troy. I apologize. It's very small fees and fines on to 2021 property tax bills. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion. Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second. Council Member Ash McPherson and uh, Andy, um, I understand the New York State law due to COVID. And the state of emergency uh, does not allow water charges to be relevied. Therefore, the administration is requesting the council consider all other fees, such as garbage, bulk, uh, the violations, and I believe um, also um, uh, uh, vacancy. Um, violations. Um, so maybe you could walk through it. Um, I did look at last year's and I saw that a half million dollars was on the garbage and Andy sent us this year's uh, amount. So take it away, Andy, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so this ordinance, like the council president mentioned, uh, foregoes relevy just for 2021. Uh, for, I'm going to exclude water bills and then pivot back. Uh, garbage bills, bulk pickup fees, garbage violations, water shop work bills, and sewer shop work bills. Vacant building fees will still be relevied. That will be proposed to the council at the finance committee meeting two weeks from now. Okay. Um, I exclude water because wa city water and city sewer charges because of uh, legislation that was signed into law by the governor after being approved by the New York State Legislature, that is of my opinion from a financial perspective, along with the Corporation Council from a legal perspective, that it is not allowing water bills to be relevied onto 2021 property taxes. Um, we are working on implementing the program that that law requires. Essentially, the law that prohibited National Grid from turning off their utility service also prohibited municipalities from turning off for water services. It has a clause in there for payment plans. Um, not to get sidetracked, but that's that's what that involves. We're work as I mentioned, we're working through that now. Andy, I apologize. Council Member Gully is now with us. We have all seven present. Thank you. 
So, and 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 thinking and looking at relevies, this legislation essentially defers defers the actual relevy of all user fees under the 2021 property tax bills. Uh, that is why vacant building fees are are still going to be proposed to be relevied because it is our opinion that they are a separate type of bill. Um, Water is a service that's not being relevied. Garbage, I think we all can agree, is also a service. So to keep it apples to apples, if one is not being relevied, the other is proposed not to be as well. I think it can be confusing for people that, if you, for staff and for residents to have one fee relevied and one fee not. Um, the one thing I do wanna note is, just because they are not being relevied does not mean that we are not going to try to get the money collected. We will still be sending out delinquent letters consistently and looking to collect as we can. Um, the other item I wanted to note before questions, that as I stated in my email yesterday, the balances that we sent were outstanding as of the first. It's probably close to the amounts that would be relevied, um, but je generally it's a, it's a 10 to 15 day process to get the relevy uh, prepared because we verify all the balances. And one of the big things we do is make sure that all the bills have been outstanding for 30 days so that people have had ample time to pay the bills. So I know some of the num the numbers looked high and I'm not going to disagree that they were high, uh, but I don't want the impression to be that that would, that would have been the dead, dead set number for relevy. It could have been, it could not have been. We just needed time to review it. And with that said, I'll take any questions. Okay, I'll open it up to Council members. President. Yep, Council Member Ash McPherson. Um, Andy, I have a couple questions. Um, the first question is, when you're saying that they're still going to be responsible for these bills, you're still going to send out delinquent, and I'm assuming you're still going to be attaching late fees. Um, when it comes down to the end of 2021, and you go to re-levy those that did not pay on the 2022, you'll be adding 2020 re-levy and 2021 re-levy. Is that legal to add? I would defer to Corporation Great. Council uh, on the legality of that. Hi, Rick. I see that you are with us, you're on mute. Um, could you weigh in here um, to council member Ash McPherson's question? Is it legal to stay? I didn't, yep. uh, can you, I don't know, hope you can hear me now. Sorry, I had trouble yeah. unmuting. No problem. Uh, the legislation itself, I think says that they uh, can be relevied in uh, 2022. I don't know of any law that would prohibit us from relevying them. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, it's perfectly legal. Um, thank you. But my question, in addition to that, you're saying it can be, should the wording be changed from can be to will be? I just don't want to see a problem in 2022 20. that you're looking over a million dollars here of, of, and I understand your logic to it. Okay. But if you go to relevy in 2022 for 2020, and you're saying it was can be, can there be a challenge to that? Well, I mean, there, there can be a challenge to anything, uh, council. Uh, but uh, if you, I don't have the, I apologize, I don't have the legislation in front of me, but if you want to insert the word shall, uh, I think it's in the last clause. Um, you, you do have, but, uns, uh, but such unpaid items, Rick, shall otherwise remain valid obligations due and owing to the city and subject to future relevy. Yeah, so I do have shall, okay. Yeah. So, so in other words, that legislation says they shall be subject to future relevy. And you don't see any legalities of that not happening? Uh, I don't see any legal impediment to it happening. Uh, I, the council makes its own decisions here and they could make a different decision in 2021, I suppose. Uh, but as, as far as I am concerned, the, uh, the 
moratorium on relevy, which this ordinance basically enacts, is not a permanent thing. Council President. Uh, hold on one second, Council Member Ash McPherson. You still have the floor. Do you have any further questions? No, I guess my just concern is is exactly what I'm stating is I want to be able to, I understand the, the logic behind this. And when you go to relevy 20 and 2022, 20, you're also going to be relevying 2021 taxes that weren't paid. So there's going to be a lot more money going out to the taxpayers in 2022, I'm assuming. So that's what my concern is. Right. Um, so Go ahead. So uh, if so, say, for example, uh, someone today has a water shop work, water uh, service work done that results in a water shop work bill. Obviously, that bill wouldn't be outstanding for 30 days. It would not be relevied onto the 2021 property taxes. If that bill was still unpaid on December 1st, 2021, it would be included in the 2021, 2021 to 2022 relevy. So we, there are instances historically where we relevy bills that are 13, 13 months old, uh, just based off that 30 day uh, rule that we have. Um, I don't, so there is precedent for having it cross years. Will, will it be increased in 2022? It certainly, you know, you would think it would be based off the current outstanding balances, uh, but we will do everything in our power to get the money collected. Um, you know, the big piece of the, I know the garbage is the highest one on its own. The water and the sewer combined is over a million dollars. Our hands are tied on that. Right. There's nothing, you know, regardless of this ordinance, we are not able to relevy it. So that's going to be carried over year to year. Anyways, right. and I understand I'm not talking about the water. I'm talking about the garbage, the bulk and the garbage violations. Yep. Council president. Uh, yep. Wait one second. One second. Uh, uh, hold well, on. I have a response yep. for Kim. Okay. Hold on one sec. Council member Ash McPherson. Yeah. Um, my, my, uh, the question. Okay. Give me one second on that. Do you see this as being uh, an issue to our cash flow in 2021. To the general fund, no. It actually helps the general fund um, because the general fund does not have to make the garbage, water, and sewer funds whole on the relevies. Could it have an impact on water and – well, I mean, you have to take them separately, right, because of the, the law. Could it have an impact on garbage – and all three, yes, um, we've you know we that's something that we continuously monitor. Um, the 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 cash position of water and sewer is very sound. Um, the I cash position of garbage because it's a newer fund is you know not as sound as the other ones. I do think that it, it can make it through year to year. So do you see it, cause it costing us more by not doing this in the garbage and the bulk and the violations? As, is it going to cost the taxpayers more or is it going to? Well, I mean, it's the responsibility of the person who hasn't paid the bill to pay the relevy. Right. So, yeah. I don't think, it, you know, if you haven't paid your bill, it, it, it's, it's going to get paid either th ideally through relevy or through the delinquent notices that we continuously send. Uh, right, but not doing the relevy. I just want to know how it's going to affect the, the cash flow in those three funds. For the we've, never, we've, never, we've never not relevied before. So I, I, it's all speculative. I, I, it could it have an impact most certainly. Um, to what to what degree is really unknown because we're all it's I don't want the impression to be tonight that we're gonna you know not relevy and wipe our hands of it and not not worry about 2020 outstanding good garbage bills or water shop work bills or sewer shop work bills and just you know come back and look at it next uh, 12 months from now you know it's it's going to be continuously looked at we you know the delinquent letters are going to continue to go out We'll do everything in our power to collect the funds. I, I, I don't know the true impact that it could have. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Monica. So Kim, to, for the, I just wanted to let you know, just in, in addition to the legislation, there's actually city code. Uh, it's 247.18 about the relevy. Um, so just so you know, it's in the, it's actually in the city code in addition to the legislation that's in front of you too. And it says, um, it says but any, any bill or fees or charges not paid by December 1st of each year can be, shall be relevied, shall be added to the annual city tax levy. So there's that. So for the reciprocal years afterwards, uh, the 247-18 is the city charter code or city code number. Thank you. Okay, council member, uh, you're good, right? Council member. I'm good, thank you. Very good, council member Cummings. Um, yeah, so it sounds like we have precedent on that. Um, I, I would be hesitant to have it be shell just because there are so many unknowns in the next year. We don't know whether this state law is gonna change uh, or, or anything else. So I don't know that I wanna Well, the shall is in there now and the shall refers, and I think we need it kept in that it's still a debt owed. Um, right, well, certainly. I just don't right. want to commit that we're certainly going to relevy it in 2021 because obviously if there's anything we know, it's that we don't know the future. Um, but um, that being said, uh, my, my main concern, I guess, one on the garbage fund, um, should it end up that it uh, that this creates a cash flow issue in the garbage fund. What mechanisms do we have to address that cash flow issue? Do, are, there, are there mechanisms for borrowing? Are there mechanisms for transferring from funds with uh, available fund balances um, just to deal with, with those cash flow issues? Um, should we uh, have a continued difficulty in, in collecting these bills? We could certainly look at you know, balance sheet inner fund loans uh, between funds. That's permissible as long as they're paid back, which they would be. Uh, there's you know rules that come with those. Um, okay. Great. As long as that flexibility exists, uh, then it doesn't make a big difference. Um, the only difference that I do see it making is on the individuals, um, which is that uh, I guess the question is. How do we plan on handling uh, interest and fees over the course of this year? Because obviously, um, you know, some of these folks may well have a, a legitimate hardship that uh, makes it so they haven't had an, uh, the ability to, to pay this bill. Um, in which case, we don't necessarily want to be hitting them with uh, large interest rates. Um, but then, similarly, some folks may just have a hard time managing all the different bills that come. Uh, and have a, an easier time just paying the tax bill once a year. And yeah, that includes some interest, but if it includes two years of interest, that start, I mean, that gets close to over the course of the two years, I think we charge probably almost 50% interest over those two years. So we're, we're adding a lot to their bills. If, um, if they don't notice this bill until we relevy it in 2022, it's going to be a lot higher than it was in 2020. Um, so I guess the question there is, do we have mechanisms for or plans to um, change interest or fee rates uh, for these uh, unrelevied bills um, or uh, new ways of communicating very clearly that this is a bill that will not be relevied um, and if they uh, don't want to be charged interest, they need to be paying it. I, I'm assuming you're speaking in regards to the interest rates and their penalty rates on the non-relevied bills. Correct. So if this were to pass, I obviously you're, you're correct. There needs to be messaging done. As I mentioned before, you know, we'll send out delinquent letters every single month and, and make them aware of the outstanding balance. Um, short of that. I mean, that that's, we, we do that now. Um, the penalty charges are all governed are governed by you know water rules and regulations or the city code. You know when it comes to these fees, um, the water bills have will have a program as directed by the state that people can apply for. Um, again, we're working through those rules now because the state does not have clear guidance, shockingly, that as to how that program is to be implemented. 
So, you know, it's kind of up to us to design. Um, I will also know, and I don't, everyone knows this. I'm not one to opine on individuals' financial circumstances. This is just from what we've seen in my office this year, I would say we've heard of people con contacting for assistance of maybe five people or less pertaining for hardship pertaining to COVID. Um, it is not something that we are, and maybe the council is, but we are not, we are, uh, my office is not hearing that as of now. That's but again, it, we are going to keep, con we will continue to send letters out. That's why when I see two to 3,000 bills uh, outstanding, I think that maybe more of a, a communication issue or, you know, people just aren't good at checking the mail anymore. Uh, you know, it's not, not your, your fault on your end in terms of communication, but, um, you know, if folks are missing the bills. This, what, what seems like an, an act of forgiveness and not, not relevying, not, uh, pushing it on them will end up just costing them more if they continue to miss these bills um, as opposed to if it was just re-levied and, and in their escrow or whatever else. The only mechanism we have of contacting people for outstanding bills because of the accounting system we have is by regular mail. It is, we are not able to send, you know, put an email address into the system and say, we're going to email you your bill. No, um, it, the accounting system just simply isn't capable of it, and that this is the hand we are dealt is is yeah. regular mail. A, I hope that is uh, on the spec list for the future system. But B, um, you know, are there ways of communicating to uh, the folks who would normally be getting the tax bill if it's an escrow system? Um, are there way? You know, I don't know. Just because I. You know, I know it may be a different person that gets the, the water and the sewer bill than gets the tax bill if they're on an escrow. Is that correct? It, it's all dependent on the mailing address. Um, but what I will say is, is when we print tax bills, it is a specific process for printing tax bills. Yeah. Printing delinquent letters for water is a separate, is actually a separate process in itself than sending delinquent letters for property taxes and garbage fees because of the, the way the accounting, again, the way the accounting system is set up. Right. So short of printing all of the tax bills and all of the delinquent water letters and all of the other delinquent outstanding fees or taxes and having staff sit there and manually matching up addresses, there is no way of including it, you know, for just for example, including a, an outstanding balance summary with the property tax bill. Yeah. And honestly, I there guess. is not enough staff time to get in order to get tax bills out on time with the way the process works. There is no way it, it's just. Yeah. And I'm not asking you to do that. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is how we communicate to the person who, whose bank just pays their tax bill. I'm sorry to interrupt for a second, but I, that that's an escrow. The escrow. I apologize, Council President. Yeah. That's an escrow. The escrow isn't any part of this. I'm assuming this is for the people that just pay by on their own. This has nothing to do with escrow accounts because those, those people that are have it escrowed, that money is already set aside and has already been paid. There's nothing you can do about it. They paid their bills on time, so the escrow has nothing to do with it. This is people that are pay it themselves. They write their own check. They bring their own check in. That's what I'm understanding. If I could jump in, I, I'm an escrower. What, what would happen is 2022, if my taxes are up and I don't have enough money in there. So say I didn't pay my water bill, my garbage bill, and I just go ahead, relevy it. It's going to hit in 2022 when I get my escrow statement saying that I'm short because right. obviously there were more taxes due to the relevy. So it won't hit until 2022, but or 20, at the end of 2021, I would get that statement. But saying that, you know, right. I think so that in this case, they're not going to see it until 2023 almost. Right. Exactly. You're, okay. you're absolutely the okay. end. So I'm aware that they have missed this. No, no, no. Council President. So if they, Council President, 
Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you get a water bill, you're going to get all your delinquent notices at your water bill. So if you get your water bill at your home, if you get your garbage bill at your home, you're going to get all your delinquent water notices. If we re-levied it, then it would go to your escrow, just ex exactly what council president was saying. And it's happened to me at my old house where like I paid the bill a day late and it went, you know? Um, so I think that all those delinquent notices are still going to go to that property address. And when you look at the number of, you know, when you look at the number, you know, I think that the other piece of this is, you know, I think it's just whether people aren't getting it or people are just ignoring it. I think that could be a lot of it, the situation but as well too, they whether they, ignore their but they're still going to get the delinquent notices because the escrow will go to the bank, but then there's still the physical property address of where the water meter is. Cause we don't do separate water meters. Right? Right. It's a singular meter to the property owner. Yep. Yeah. I guess I'm not clear if we're agreeing or if you're if we're missing each other here. <laughs> um, well, you ask for communication and any communication we send out is going to go to the address on file. So it's going to go to right, me. So it's going to go to you. It's going to go to council president. It's not yeah. going to go to the bank. Right. right. So I guess that's, that's the problem. And the, the challenge with this that makes it so that what we end up doing here is, you know, I'm assuming that this two, 2000 people are not people who want to be paying 26% interest. And that's why they're not paying their bill. They're people who miss the bill and keep missing the bill and just aren't checking their mail. And I don't know what's gonna change this year that, that sending them a new note every month is gonna make them pay it. Um, and so I think it's more likely that a large proportion of these are gonna stick on the bill and get relevied in 2022. Are you talking specifically garbage? percent interest rates. Um, we're gonna be end up charging all these people who missed their bills significantly more than if they had just had it sent to their bank, their bank would pay it and they'd pay their bank. Well, so your concern, I, I understand completely, are the fees and the interest over the next year because some people, you're absolutely right. They rely on the relevy. Right. You know, they don't they communicate. Go ahead, relevy it. it. Handle it right. for it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And I did look at the properties from last year. And some of those folks are, are in the thousands of dollars. They're probably most likely landlords, I'm thinking, um, with multiple units. So I guess the question is, um, we have the ability to, um, you know, not uh, at least to, to uh, inform the administration or have the administration um, not impose those uh, fines over find some interest over the next year. Um, and then, you know, pick it back up obviously for 2022. So I, I see your concern because some people, especially I would think, you know, multiple unit landlords, they're okay, just relevy on my tax bill and, you know, I'll deal with, Here. you know. You know, it's about mental energy. And you, you know, if you pay one bill a year rather than Right. five I get it. A year you know it's a lot more expensive i don't recommend it um but we're making it twice as expensive to do that well we can we can state no interest in fines for these particular um relevies over you know the next year yeah so, i don't know that i want president? to president because obviously it costs us money to to not have the income over, you know, this is a, a large- Yeah, but think about it. We oh, yeah. we wouldn't be getting that income because it would have been re-levy, but we're holding off because of COVID. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So technically sure. that wasn't in sure. and it won't be in the budget for next year. Um, Monica? So, I mean, Anasha or Council, Councilman Cousins, are you talking specifically about the garbage stuff? I'm talking about both. I think there are okay. likely a non-insignificant number of people who, uh, and honestly, it's a bigger issue with the water bills, which are probably a significant right. larger sum. So, so I think it's important to remember that the the water and sewer is the the water is is the specific to the governor's executive order. So yeah. just the water. So all the others. I mean, if you're concerned about the garbage and and accumulating additional penalties and interest, you know, we can certainly take that section out of this legislation. 
rather than going into city code and charter and taking three meetings and making a local law and changing penalty and interest things, you can certainly also look at, and I'm just saying this is a yeah, suggestion, the only requirement is the water. It, it, All it, the other stuff we felt because it was a user it, fee like state, that we would do that. It sounds like the state has some existing solutions proposed theoretically underway to deal with the interest and penalties with a payment plan instead of uh, as many right. large interest and penalties with the water fund, whereas that's not necessarily the case on the sewer and, and Correct. The garbage. Garbage. Yeah. Correct. And so that, that's that's always an right. option. If you want to develop Correct. a similar program for garbage and sewer to delay it and and let people pay it off over time without quite this level of, of interest, that's fine. Or if we want to just yeah. it, I think what I was going to suggest, um, council members and, and Monica and everyone was just putting in you know, something in this particular ordinance stating, you know, that the not relevy unpaid fees and fines and, you know, basically no fines in 2021 for not paying this bill. Obviously that's not the language, but the ordinance would read just deferring the fines and, you know, interest for 2021 as a result of the non-re-levy. You get what I'm saying? Council President, I, nobody would pay their bills in 21. Why would you pay your bill when you could sit on the money if there's no penalty or fine or interest for not paying it? It would, it would destroy our cash flow in those funds. No, no, but I'm just saying specifically for the re-levy. Think about it, normally, this would be relevy. We're saying, okay, don't relevy. But then on top of it, we're making the decision not to relevy and we're going to impose additional fines by not relevying. What I'm saying this specifically, not the people that don't pay next year's mayor. I'm saying the relevy, whoever we don't relevy, that we don't charge them interest and fees on the non-relevy. Or did you not plan to charge interest and fees next year by not relevying? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm only well, talking about well, the relevying. So in the no. garbage fund in particular, it sounds like we were hoping to collect uh, some significant amount of this $600,000 um, through continued delinquent notices. Is that correct from a cash flow perspective in the, in the garbage fund? That we we do need to collect some portion of this next year, um, or or could we theoretically be okay with basically postponing collection on all of this uh, until 2022? So just a couple. I I had to. I'm going to back up and then come back up. Okay. Sewer is going to be sewer is going to be sewer is a package with water because the way that legislation is written, if you the same issues are going to occur with sewer as water. So sewer is part of water. I think to the mayor's point, and I'm just going to be really honest, if there's no penalties, the, the city's going to, we are going to spend money that was not budgeted for to send out delinquent letters. It is going to be very expensive. I think to what the, the mayor's point is, is if the bill is $100 due today, and it's going to be $100 every month in 2021, and then it's going to get relevied for $100, they're just not going to pay the bill. And that that's the instance. And right. it, we're going to see here today what the balance is today is going to be the balance in December of 21. And there's no incentive. Again, I don't like opine. I don't like getting into this because everyone has a different situation. Right. But if it's a blanket, no penalties, no interest. I would ask, why would someone pay the bill if the bill's never going to go up and it's just going to stay the same dollar amount due throughout the year? And I guess the question is how many people, and I imagine there, and I can't predict how many people, but many people are assuming it will be relevied. See, that's my concern. So all of a sudden come February or March, oh shoot, you didn't relevy it. Now I have this bill plus interest and penalties. That's my concern. And, and I get it. And, and I get what everyone's saying. I, I guess the concern is we're trying to help folks 
And we may be defeating the purpose by adding the interest and penalties because that can add up quite a bit. Um, so say, you know, you send a violation notice, you know, say in March or April. I mean, that's three, four months of interest and penalties. And I agree the SOAR is included, Andy, in the state law. So, you know, up to the council, the question is, you know, we need to make a decision. Do we help people by not relevying, but then at the same time, they need to know there's going to be interest in, you know, some penalties tacked on by not relevying. Council President. Council Member Ash McPherson. I think in my questions when I, we first started this, you know, a lot of it was going back to that as well as the, the, the late fees, the fines. And I'm under the assumption that we are helping the taxpayers that cannot pay. Um, but by let, by letting them re, not relevying them and relevying 2022. My understanding of all this, according to Andy, was they're still going to be sending out late notices and bills and stating that this is due now and you are going to be getting late fees and so forth. Maybe if you put it in there, let them make some payments during that time. I don't think by taking the late fees away, I mean, I could turn around and tell my escrow, don't pay my taxes for a year because it's going to be the same next year and just keep on letting that money add up and, and take the interest. I, I, I will state they, they won't do that. The, the bank is a lien holder. You're, they have to, through the escrow, you can't decide what gets turned over to the city. It, it, we have no control. Like I, I do because I'm able to increase my increase or decrease. It depends on how my taxes go up. My point is I don't think we should be taking away the fines and the levies because what about those people that are paying and they're struggling as well, but they're paying on time through the escrows or whatever. Um, I get it. We're trying to help them, but I, I, in the other breath too, is we're giving them 12 months to possibly pay it off. That's why I'm thinking, you know, maybe we just relevy. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I just, you know, some people right now, okay, they're relevying this onto my taxes and they're going to find out, you know, in March and April, shoot, it wasn't relevying. Now on top of it, I have penalties and interest. That's, you know, I, I get, I get it. You know, I'm not advocating getting rid of the interests and penalties, but at the same time, I don't want to hurt people who, you know, right now they, they are under the assumption it will be relevied. So that's, you know, so <laughs> President. council member Gully. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion. I don't know if it's feasible or doable, but it seems to generate my mind that it might help the situation. What if we offered the interest and penalty bills on the account, but if you pay it off in the first six months of 2021, they'll negate the interest and penalty. But if it goes past the first six months of 2021, then the interest and penalty gets secured onto the account. Sort of like a Home Depot deal. That's that, would, that would be similar to the program we did for water and sewer earlier this year in the month of October. Right. Um, I don't, my understanding can talking with st the staff that oversaw that. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. I mean, obviously, you can see it from the real levy amount or the outstanding balance amount sent the other day. It's like a name. Yeah, the program had the right intentions. And, you know, we could, if it's constantly want to go down that path, you know, it would require legislation. And, it, it, you know, we could figure out a way to roll that out uh, within my office. Um, uh, Andy, uh, I'm just thinking that if we give somebody an, a date, a goal, and give them an opportunity to pay it up in a six-month period, that most people who can pay to want to avoid the interest and penalty will do that, which will, which will bring in that, that, that revenue to the city uh, and clear up a lot of those bills. And then the ones that don't are probably going to be, you know, I don't know if the law will be hardship cases. I think most of them will just be uh, – inattentive landlords that just do the same thing every year but um i can't i can't say that for sure but i just thought it might be an option in between not doing it or doing it that might make sense for us to to creatively get people to pay faster 
I think the problem is, as Andy mentioned, it, it didn't go over too well. It's an amnesty, basically. And, you know, you're offering people six months. I, I think there's going to be a cost to that, too, um, you know, because you're essentially saying to get those letters out, there's there's a cost. So I don't know. Uh, Council President? Yes, Council Member Zalewski. I, I just, I'll keep it short. I, I, I think I tend to agree with uh, Councilwoman Ash McPherson on this. I, I think we should just, uh, you know, proceed as this was designed. Uh, I, I don't think we want, I mean, we're, we're already giving uh, taxpayers a little bit of a benefit here by not doing the relevy. Uh, I feel like the administration has probably thought this through quite a bit. Uh, I don't want to create more of a headache in terms of managing, you uh, you know, uh, some type of amnesty program that may or may not actually work. So I, 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 I'm just inclined to, to go forward with the way it's been designed right now. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Zalewski. I apologize. We have a couple folks um, who are waiting and if all are okay, only because I know we want to continue discussing this. Um, we have uh, just an incredible, incredible special person with us. And I'm going to, if all is okay, we can do the good news right now during the finance, um, if, if the council's fine with that. And I would imagine we are all pretty cool with that. So um, we have a guest with us and that is Edna Wells and June Foltz. And uh, June contacted uh, council members Lusky and I um, to inform us of a 103rd, yes, folks, 103, uh, which I will never ever make it to, but 103 years old. Um, Edna, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Um, we welcome you on behalf of the mayor, the deputy mayor, the city council. Um, hello, and how are you? Thank you very much. Speak up. Can you hear her? We sure can. You want to tell them where you graduated from high school and where you graduated from college? Graduated from Lansingburg High School. Oh my gosh, what and year? Then, and I graduated from Russell Sage College. I like our hometown. <laughs> you know what years? Remember what years? High, high school was 19. 39. No, that was, what was 1939? That was Russell Sage. Yeah. So high school was 30, 19. Well, how about this? Five. Edna? 1935. Yeah. yeah. She From watched the fire of City Hall in 1938. She was over at the Sage campus and came over to watch the uh, fire. Was that Third Street and Sage? The original. Yeah. Um, Edna, uh, we would like to read you a proclamation on behalf of the city council, and then we're going to turn it over to you. And I know council members have um, something very, very nice and sweet to say to you. So um, this is a certificate of recognition and Mara, our city clerk, who has contacted you earlier this evening, will send you the hard copy of this uh, certificate. Whereas Edna Wells was born on December 5th, 1917 and lived most of her life in Troy, New York. And whereas Miss Wells graduated from Lansingburg High School in 1935, yep. Russell Sage College in 1939 and yep. earned her master's degree from Cornell University. And whereas she taught home economics to junior high students in Green Island, Troy, and Lansingburg for many years. And whereas she has traveled to all 50 states and during World War II, she made sandwiches for the troops and entertained them by playing the piano. And whereas on Veterans Day in 2020, she played the piano for residents of the Eddy to honor the veterans. The city council hereby congratulates Edna Wells on the occasion of her 103rd birthday and thanks her 
for all she has done throughout her long life for the students and veterans of Troy, New York. Your rich and full life of service is an inspiration to us all. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> very nice. And we would love to hear from you. And then I know some council members would like to congratulate you. So you really have visited all 50 states? Yeah. So right. I'm dessert in each state. What's your favorite? New York. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Edna, thank you so, so much and happy birthday. And I'd like to turn it over to council members. Thank you. Council President. Council Member Ash McPherson. Edna, happy birthday, happy 103rd birthday. I'd like to ask you one question. Do you drink a lot of water? <laughs> of course. And so that's the Troy water that has kept you going for 103 years. <laughs> that's right. It's an important part of this conversation tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I'd like to say. I was born in Water Relief. That's okay. That's they get Troy right. water too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I have an uncle who is also my godfather who's 102. And let me tell you. You are spry just like he is, and I wish you so much more life in your 103 years. Um, I wish you well, and I wish you a very, very happy birthday. Thank you very much. Is he local? She might know him. Um, he No, not any longer. He's down in Florida now, and he keeps on sending me pictures because he's my godfather, and he keeps on saying to me, you'll never catch up to me. <laughs> That's cute. Was he in this area though? Yes, he was. He was from Troy. So she might know him. She knows a lot of people around here. What's his George name? George Locke. His name is George Locke. What, what, how do you spell his last name? L-O-U-C-K-E. Oh, nice. Yeah. You remember him? <laughs> yep. Guess not. Oh, no, I went to Lansing for schools. Yeah, he did not. No, he did not. And then I graduated from Russell Sage College. But you have seen so much history throughout our city and throughout our county. It's amazing. And the stories you may have are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Steele. Edna, I'm, I'm a fellow Russell Sage graduate. So oh. uh, w what color were you? Were you a red devil or a... Purple cow, or or what Red was your? Devil. So was I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but back back before World War II, it was simply red. It wasn't oh, red. red. They, they didn't were... add the mascot name until after the war, when you couldn't be red. Ah, okay. Well, our we, another history lesson tonight. There you go. Um, uh, I'm well acquainted with your daughter Susan, and uh, I think in reading your history. Uh, I can see where you've inspired her and her work for the veterans through the STARS program. So um, it continues on and, and, and we're so grateful to have you um, sharing your talents uh, with the piano and inspiring others. Um, Thank you. What a wonderful, wonderful inspiration to all of us. I so, have another daughter, June. Okay. Born in the month of June. The name is you. You're you're blessed to have family around you. That's great. Thanks for being 103 and sharing that with us. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Council President. Yes, Council Member Gully. Edna, as you'll know, I also know your daughter Susan. <laughs> oh, good. I have her star here, and I got to tell you, you did a great job with transferring all that belief in Troy to her because she does a wonderful job out there. And I think that um, I want to say thank you because of you, she is who she is and she's doing what she's doing. And I think all of us want to just say thank you to you. Happy 103rd. Well, thank you very much. And now uh, she is uh, watching on YouTube right now. Hi, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone else like to? Yeah, Council President. Council Member Zalewski. First of all, happy birthday, Edna. 
Uh, my understanding is that uh, we have a mutual friend uh, at Beachwood, and that's my uh, my old neighbor, uh, Dawn Weinrub, who used to live right across the street from us. That's right. What's her name? Dawn. Dawn is his friend. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And yeah, Dawn is a, Dawn is a dear friend, and uh, apparently you are quite entertaining on the piano. <laughs> and uh, at some point, I'd like to uh, I'd like to hear you on the keys. I, I try and play the piano myself. Uh, I'm probably not as good as you, uh, but I'd, I'd love to uh, I'd love to hear some music from you. And uh, actually, I do have a question for you. Uh, besides Troy Water uh, keeping you going, uh, how about music? Do you have any comment on music and, and the role that's played in your life and, and, uh, and keeping you uh, vibrant? Oh, music. As far back as I can remember, the music was a was a very important part of my life, all my life. Excellent. Yep, I definitely encourage people. Uh, definitely encourage people to get involved with music. There's something very special about it, and uh, of course, the piano is uh, is my favorite instrument. So, once again, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Anyone else? Well, Ed, uh, um, we thank you so much for sharing, Susan, uh, you, the impact that Susan has had not only in Troy, but Rensselaer County, and she's anywhere and everywhere. She's constantly handing out the stars, and uh, she's actually traveled to Washington a number of times, and uh, do you know the figure? I know she is mailed. And I, I know she's listening right now, but she has mailed a number of stars all across the, the country. And I know she has that number. I'm not sure if June knows it or, um, but. I think that in October of this year, she processed over 400 flags. Incredible. In just the one month. Um, but you wanna know how many per, this year? That's fine. No, yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's a huge number and she's always looking for additional flags. So well, what's the number? Uh, um, well, she'll probably send it to me because <laughs> she's watching. So she probably will send it. But I know she sent it in the last, um, the last uh, letter to the board of directors, but I would have to look that up. Well, what's the number? Well, she didn't send it. Hey June. Yeah. Hey June. While we have you, yeah. um, I'm, I'm a fellow uh, Lansing Burke High graduate. So uh, you attended Lansing Burke when it was LES, the element or the middle school, um, which is on Fifth Ave. Is that where the high school was on Fifth Avenue? The high. So I attended my sophomore and junior years were in the old Burke. And I was in the first graduating class from the, the new bird, which was 50 years ago. But, um, but so anyway, that's how I fit in there. And then I, I graduated from RPI. Gotcha. Okay. Well, June, we, we just are so thankful for everything that you have done. And uh, we wish you a happy, happy 103rd. Did you want to end uh, uh, with a... Uh, a comment or anything and, and wish us uh, and Troy well. She wants to know if you want to wish Troy well. Oh, you bet I do. <laughs> <laughs> I got the number from Susan now. She has sent 250,000 stars in 10 years. Unbelievable. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, thank you. Well, Edna, we thank you for sharing Susan with us, sharing June with us. You're a very, very special lady and 103 more years, okay? <laughs> thank you very much. That would be something. <laughs> it sure would. It sure would. It sure would. It sure would. Edna, thank you so, so much. Thank you for blessing us with your presence, your true ins inspiration. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for those kind words. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Happy birthday.
All right, uh, back to finance, back to reliving or not reliving. That is the question. So, um, Council President. Yes, Rick. Uh, it's uh, Rick Morrissey. Um, there's one uh, misapprehension I'd like to correct for the record, I think. Uh, if you look at section three of the ordinance, it states that uh, PSL 89L effect makes it effectively impractical to relevy unpaid water charges. Um, the state legislation does not specifically prohibit a relevy. Uh, the reason I, I wrote it that way is because, uh, because it requires that you give a payment plan to anyone who asks for one, who says that they have uh, had a, that COVID-19 has adversely affected them financially. Uh, right now, that legislation is good through March 31st. It, it would create an administrative nightmare uh, for Andy's uh, crew if they relevied the water and then people came in all throughout the, the first part of the year and they would have to undo all those charges. Uh, and I, I just wanted the council to understand that uh, it is not forbidden by state law, but it, it, as a practical matter, it's just impossible. Understood, understood. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. And uh, so to pick it back up, you know, I guess, um, you know, the question is, um, you know, obviously the penalties and fees, I get what you're saying, Andy, um, to get back to council member Cummings concerns. Um, I do share those concerns also, you know. I did so a little bit of math uh, that I wanted to just go over, make sure I'm, I'm right on. Um, it looks like for someone who didn't pay either of their bills so far, uh, last year, it, it's the interest has gotten, made the bill go from the 180 to about 202, 203. This is just the trash fee. Uh, although I think water bills have similar scale increases, um, if not larger in number. Um, so it'd be 202, if it, 203, if it was relevied, uh, this year, if it remains unpaid over all of next year, my rough math would be that it'd be about uh, $45, $50 more. So we'd end up then billing them $250 next year. So the question is, you know, are we, are we helping people out by putting off a $200 bill and charging them to a 50 instead um, next year? Right. Um, and then, so the question for the, for the track, for the garbage fund is, um, do we need it, right? Do we, uh, what would it mean to just say, you know, we're not collecting these bills over the next year and uh, rather than it going up to 250, you know, it goes up, I don't know if it's through some kind of a, um, what we do on the relevy next year, but just say uh, there's a flat, fee or a flat uh, amount that covers covers the bills, but don't have Andy's office spend all year chasing after these Thanks, fee folks. Cause you know, obviously that you've been chasing after them for, for a while already. Right. Um, and uh, is it worth spending all year trying to chase after them and try to get them to pay? Or can we just say uh, we'll collect okay. it in 2022 yeah. at its current rate rather than at a rate that's, that's double that's significantly increased. Yeah, and, and that's a legitimate um, proposal to essentially, okay, you know, eat the penalties and fines next year and relevy it in 2022. And maybe one mailer goes out to all the folks who were to be relevied stating, you know, we're not going to relevy to your 2021, but we will be relevying, you know, such and such amount to 2022. Or you could pay the bill now and it won't be very levy. Like one mailer go out and state that. I, I don't know. There's a, there's a fee for the relevy as well? Just one of the- No, no. I don't think so, Andy. No. Okay. So, I mean, that, to me, that, that makes more sense than, you know, trying to help people and, you know, really it's not essentially helping people come, you know, December of 2021. And if they didn't pay their 2021, 
they're looking at a massive 2022 re-levy. You right. know? Council President? Council Member Ashley McPherson. I still think that we're still helping our constituents and our taxpayers by not, you know, we're giving to them that we're not going to re-levy this, but you still have the whole year to pay it before it's levied on 2022. And I think that, you but know, when I first like read this- It goes up and up and up and up. But you know what? The garbage fee goes up and up every year too, Anasha. But this is, you're trying to help somebody right different. now. And I think by by trying to, to change this into several different ways, I think it's becoming more complicated than it needs to be. That's just my opinion. Thank you, Council Member Ash McPherson. You can, know, I, can I just get a clear answer on where the garbage fund stands and, and the water fund? You know, if we if we didn't have this million dollars in the water and sewer fund and this six hundred thousand dollars in the water in the garbage fund over the next year, if we just assumed that only ten percent of it got paid next year and the rest got paid on the relevy. I mean, you heard Rick say it. It is administratively impossible for us to relevy water and sewer. Yep. Right. It, 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 there is there is no denying that. And I'm not advocating for you too. What I'm asking is what happens if we don't have this revenue next year and we just count on getting it in 2022? As so I- Focus on garbage. Perspective. So as I had stated before, that's speculative. It, will it have an impact? If no one pays it, it will have an impact on the garbage fund. So, I mean, it, that's the situation. So that's what I'm asking. We, what is the impact if if if, it, what, if, if the if again. the council if the if no one pays the six hundred thousand dollars, it will have an impact on the garbage fund. As I said before, if the penalties could if the penalties were to continue to go on the bills, and we would send out monthly delinquent notices, and, and we do the best we can to communicate it, hopefully people would pay it. Right. But if if there's that no takes, penalties, and it, go ahead. I mean, that takes. I don't know what it costs to your office to be sending out those thousand letters every month. Um, you know, there's a significant cost to the city in doing that. Um, I compare that to what would be the cost to just, uh, you know, do some kind of a, a cash loan between departments and expect to collect it in 2022. I mean, essentially like, like what you're saying, um, a, a tan, a tax anticipation note, but it would be a garbage. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like we're anticipating those monies, but the problem is it wouldn't happen until 2022. So, I mean, I get it. You're, you know, we need some of that money in 2021. We want to help folks, but I still don't, I, I kind of see this backfiring because you know, that's some folks, right. $150,000 of fees next year. For right, that. right. That's oh. the thing. Exactly. Right. Council President. Yes, Council Member Gully. Uh, Sorry about that. I clicked my button too many times. <laughs> Andy, in 2019, how much, how many, can you pull up how much uh, how many people were delinquent at this point and how many people we had to relevy? So we kind of verify like how many people paid that money before it got relevied in 2019. So it gets some sort of percentage of who the consistency is that might not pay by the date. Can you do that? I, I got, Andy, if you want, the 2020 relevy and um, for the... Uh, and Andy, you can verify this for the garbage. I saw 515764, but it was relevied. So it was immediately relevied for 2020. So those okay. people didn't pay. And okay. then there, I have 333, Andy, for you, you can verify um, 333, 550. Um, that might have been, bear with me. Uh, and then I have 112.594 for the violations. So I'm just trying to figure out when we were at this point last year, now Anasha said there's 2,000 unpaid accounts. Am I correct, Anasha? That's the number you said? 2,000? I believe that was, that's the rough amount on the, on the trash bill. There's about 3,000 on the water and sir. Is that correct, Andy? 
In, in, oh. Well, in, in 2020, we relevied 515762 for the garbage fee. And and were we at the same point we were now? Were we at like almost a million dollars there? Or, or you know, how, what I'm trying to figure out is how many people from this point before it got relevied came in and paid the bill? How What percentage of people came in and paid? What can we expect to get for results out of, you know, out of that percentage? Are you asking what percentage of people paid the relevy? Yeah. And I would have, I would have to run that. Yeah. What I'm just saying, if it was a bigger number, if it was a million dollars when we, when before it was relevied, you know, we look at, if we look at December of 2018 or December of 2019, um, how much was paid between December and when you relevied it onto the taxes? I'm just trying to figure out if, if there's enough that's going to come in there, you know? Because well, uh, if you don't relevy it this year, it's going to ride. It's going to ride a year. Um, I like. I like to kind of have an idea what that number is going to be, or close to it. Yeah, and you know the people like as mentioned earlier, the people that escrow. I mean, it's automatic, um, so it's paid, and then obviously the. But um, only once it's relevied. They they correct. They'll never notice correct uh, the water bills and the and the garbage bills until it's relevied. Correct. Correct. Not if they read their mail. Well, that's the question. Is that our responsibility? We're looking at two thousand people. What about the forty-eight thousand other people that are in the city? I mean, we got to look at the whole picture here. So we're looking at two thousand properties, which is right. Twenty-six thousand. It's a pretty big number. Count, uh, Mayor. Council President, the administration would be fine at this point if uh, if you wanted to withdraw the legislation. Um, we'll deal with a non relevy of water and sewer administratively. Okay, thank you, Mayor. And you know, th this is the question. I mean, if the uh, obviously there's concerns, um, and you know, I, I I get it. We're trying to help folks, but I think in the long run, it may not help folks. And you know, so saying that, um, you know, um, we can. Pull this item. Uh, I, I can make a motion to pull the item, um, and uh, it, and it's it will be relevied. So, just so that the council is aware of the process, uh, if this is withdrawn, we will have the relevy amounts on the finance agenda for December seventeenth, and I would ask for a special meeting right after that um, so that we can. Get the relevy, it, the relevy approved, and then we can continue with tax bill processing. Understood, Andy. And we did do that last year. We had a special meeting toward the end of December. I would imagine there's some transfers uh, that we'll have to do also. So, um, you know, so saying that, um, I'll make a motion to withdraw this item as good intent intended as it does appear. I think it could potentially backfire on uh, a number of people. And, you know, I think, uh, I think we go through with the relevy and, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it, it works out well for folks. So, um, so I'll make a motion. I'll second that motion. Okay, on the discussion to uh, withdraw the legislation, we have a motion, we have a second uh, discussion. Okay. Uh, council take President. Uh, council Member Gully. Uh, hey, Council Members, this is the time to kind of hear what you're feeling, hear what you're thinking. I mean, I'm, you know, I was surprised with uh, the mayor's uh, message. So uh, if somebody wants to speak up, tell how they feel so we don't go through this four or five times, it'd be good. I will take a slow roll. Council Member Gully. Yes. Council Member Ash McPherson. Yes. Council Member Steele. I'm I'm very conflicted. Um, I think at this point I'm going to say no. 
Council Member Cummings. Um, I guess I'm also conflicted. I think obviously we need to solve the problem with the with the water and sewer bills. It sounds like maybe there's another line on how to do that, and we can talk about it over the next couple of weeks. There is time to do that, but we do need a solution there. I also still think you know I'm okay with a postponement as long as we're not charging the interest rate rates we are. But uh, that being said. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll vote yes for withdrawal for now. Uh, I'd like to keep working on this problem with folks. Okay, that's fair. If floor's not the place to do it, then we'll withdraw and, and re reschedule. Okay. Council Member Zaliski? Well, I already spoke in uh, favor of moving forward as is, so I'll vote against uh, withdrawing, so my vote is no. Understood. Council Member McDermott? I'm going to vote yes. And, you know, as mentioned, I, I do agree with not relevying because of COVID. We, we've mentioned time and time again that a lot of folks out there are seeing tough times, but I do see a problem with the fees and the penalties. And I think while we're trying to help people, this could ultimately backfire on a number of folks seeing these astronomical fees and penalties. And that's a huge concern because the whole objective is to try to help these folks. So I am going to vote yes to withdraw, but also um, I, I remain at your disposal, Andy, Mayor, uh, to work on something and we do have uh, till the end of the month. So please, I'm totally open to work on this. Um, so the ordinance is withdrawn and uh, that uh, vote was a uh, I apologize, five to two to withdraw in favor. Thank you very much. I will take a motion to adjourn the finance in a second and we'll go right into the regular if all are okay, or we could take a three minute break. Motion to adjourn. Uh, okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second, council member Steele. And on the discussion, do you want to take a quick three-man break or are, are we all good to go? I'm good. All right. Awesome. Um, finance meeting is closed. 7-0. Uh, Mara, we will go right into the regular meeting as soon as I just flip my agendas. Council President, I'll be right back. Thank you. Council Member Gully. Before uh, we go into it, we'll just wait for Council Member Gully. I guess that three minutes. Okay, we know he's coming back. So let's get the regular meeting going. Uh, Mara, I am going to open the regular meeting December 3rd, 7.49 p.m. And uh, we'll all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'll ask, uh, how about Council Member Zalewski to lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Zalewski. Uh, we'll do a quick roll call, Mara. Uh, Council Member Gully will be right back, so I'll call him in a minute. Uh, Council Member Ash McPherson. Present. Council Member Steele. Present. Council Member Cummings? Present. Council Member Zalewski? Here. <clears throat> Council Member McDermott? Here. Council President Mantello? I am here. And Council Member Gully? Present. Seven present, none absent. Thank you, Mara. Uh, we have a vacancy list, which is at the end of the agenda. And I will ask for a motion to approve the prior regular meeting minutes. Motion to approve the minutes as Thank produced. Thank you, Council Member Zalewski. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully on the discussion. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Myron? Oh, I'm sorry. Minutes are approved, uh, 7 0. Thank you. Presentation of the agenda. I will make a no ordinance 96 will not uh, be on the agenda this evening. Uh, folks were at the finance uh, that was withdrawn. Uh, we have no local laws and a couple of resolutions. We'll go right into the public forum. I believe that we have um, someone who would like to join us to speak at the public forum, correct, Marth? Yeah, uh, Christine Coxon, I'm promoting her and she can um, hopefully is there. <laughs> She's had to wait for a very long time. Sorry, Christine, thank you for being patient and we welcome you to the public forum at the regular meeting. Uh, you are on mute right now, so hello there. Can you hear me? We sure can, and I think I hear a dog in the background. As, the, as usual at my house, you're going to hear at least one dog. Okay. All thank right, Russ, that's enough. Um, my neighbor sent an email to um, the uh, council and she is not able to attend this meeting tonight so I wanted to um, sit in on her behalf um, some of you um, councilman Steele and uh, chair Montello you you're aware of the issue that we the issues that we have in our neighborhood and um, I'm not sure if other council members would be aware or not, but um, there's one house in our neighborhood that um, is constantly visited by the police. And we have, it's two years this month. Um, I can, I'm sorry, I can hear something going on there now. It's evening's entertainment. Um, it's, it's a constant disruption. Uh, at first, it was very apparent that it was a drug house and that um, drugs were being sold there on a, on a con continuing and frequent basis. Um, one person who was there, um, we, we, just, we believe there for delivery once a week has been subsequently arrested. And um, that seems to have changed the nature of the drug aspect. But it's a constantly evolving situation. Both the landlord and the people who live there seem to be very familiar with how to deal with uh, the police and, ha and how to put them off. And so although the police have responded many, many times, there's no change uh, because of their intervention, there's no change. The people have changed their methodology because they're trying to be um, less, um, less easily observed. Uh, in short, they come in through the back of the property now instead of the front. Um, so I'm faced with wanting some action that we can take that is actually going to make a difference in this situation. And I'm also faced with a moral dilemma because um, I'd like to consider myself to be a socially aware person. And I'm very aware that people staying there have no place else to go. Uh, the number of people living there not only constantly changes, it's constantly rising. Oh. We're, we're up to, uh, I think, eight people now in a three bedroom apartment. Uh, and of most concern to me is that the, the newest resident appears to be a very young child. I, I guess uh, four to five years old. So for example, when the police came last Saturday night, because one of the one of their visitors was standing in the middle of the street, screaming that she had been attacked physically by two other occupants in the apartment, um, he would have been a, a participant in this insanity. 
So I, I want the entire council to be aware and I'm sure that this is a common situation. Other people must deal with it. And so the second part of my question is, is there a community group? Is there a tenant organization or someone in Troy who effectively address these kinds of problems? Because we've, we've met with the police of chief, uh, I'm sorry, the chief of police, and we've met with I think there were five other officers in the room uh, with various responsibilities, including community policing. Uh, we've spoken many times to code enforcement. Nothing has an impact on this situation. So is there a guiding group in Troy that um, tell, tells uh, citizens what works, how to proceed um, effectively. Christine, thank you um, for you know joining us this evening. And I live uh, obviously a block away and Christine Hi. has spoken to uh, council member Steele, myself and um, we actually lost, um, I, I won't say his name, but uh, a neighbor to this house. One of the reasons he moved was this house. And, um, you know, this obviously continues to increase despite uh, the chief of police having this on the radar, despite Code, who has stopped by a couple times. And um, I do understand that uh, the vehicle that has been parked there for a while. I did report that today, Christine, um, to uh, the police chief and assistant chief. So hopefully they can address that issue. But um, I know that they have been to this house a number of times and uh, the message does not seem to be hitting home. Um, so I have been contacted while you were speaking by the deputy mayor and uh, the deputy mayor now, um, is also going to enter uh, this and hopefully help us out. And I did uh, once again, uh, send a, um, a message to the chief of police today. And I know council member Steele has been very involved also with neighbors and um, regarding a neighborhood group, council member Steele actually started a new neighborhood group. And then unfortunately COVID hit um, where the community police officer was present and would be more active with our neighborhood. So um, hopefully we can get back on track with that at some point. Um, but in the meantime, it's just unacceptable as I told you, Christine, and I'm a neighbor of yours. Now regarding using um, the backyard, I did see some of that and I did report that to the chief in the warm weather. I have not seen that as of late because just so folks know, the backyard is literally um, within the bird's eye to my house. And I did see folks using the back and there were shopping carts that were left in the lot, if you notice, mm -hmm. behind the house. I've gotten yep. removed a couple of times, but saying that I have not seen that activity in the winter. So I think they're once again coming on Taylor Court and not utilizing the backyard. Listen, it's quality of life, it's unacceptable. And all of us take these issues very, very serious. Um, I would say from my perspective, if council member Steele wants to jump in, I'm going to do everything humanly possible and continuing um, doing whatever we can and to try to catch them in the act. That's the problem here. Um, and as you said, I think they listen to the scanner because when the police uh -huh. show up, boom, uh, you know, they scatter. Um, so saying that the deputy mayor is going to help us. Uh, she did just text me and council member Steele. I don't know if you'd like to add anything. Well, I would just um, uh, echo uh, the council president's uh, remarks. I, I am so sorry that you have to deal with this. I can't. Uh, I can't imagine, uh, and I do know. Um, I'm also saying that the deputy mayor is going to help us. 
this has been a, an ongoing issue and, um, and we're, we're gonna try, do everything we can. I mean, uh, this is, it, it's unacceptable and you shouldn't have to live this way. And uh, thank you for keeping it on our radar. When I speak to the police, they're always very clear with me that these are known drug addicts. When I report a license plate, they check to see who it is. These are people who are known drug users in the community. I believe it is possible that since the arrest of the one person who um, was arrested, I believe in Lansingburg, um, and he had a weapon, and he, which I saw him uh, carrying, and I think, and I reported it to the police one day. But there's just a a lack of a connection. There's something missing that keeps this from being resolved, and. It's not that I necessarily want these people to all move because they're all homeless and it's just going to move the problem somewhere else. It seems, you know, we're missing some kind of agency connection uh, either with people who deal with drug addicts or people who deal with homelessness. Um, it, it should be, it seems to me, an integrated approach because the police haven't, in the police have been in the house and they know there are drugs, but they can't get a search warrant, which is mind boggling to me. If it, uh, one day uh, there was a person who came out who was clearly stoned and was offering to beat up the neighbor who moved away. And there was a police officer right there how is this not a situation where you can enter the home? I, you know, I mean, he was, yep. he couldn't walk a straight line. He was stoned out of his mind and threatening physical violence. How can it be that the officer observing it can't either A, arrest this person or B, go into the home to see what it is they're all imbibing in? Christine? Um, once again, you know, we, we thank you so much um, for, you know, keeping this uh, issue and, and we apologize, honestly, that you're having to go through this. And like I said, I saw activity in the back um, during the warm weather, but I haven't heard anything as of late, but I might not hear being a block over. So saying that I have gotten, I have gotten... <laughs> Russell, stop. Hello, Russell. I have uh, the he deputy. Here's the mayor. mouth side. <laughs> the deputy mayor is, uh, she just texted me again. Um, we are going to sit down with uh, the chief. We're going uh, to talk to him and also get code on the issue of the folks living there. Okay. To I appreciate that. And I don't want to take up a great deal of your time. I, I know you're busy. No, uh, no problem. But thank uh, you. There was, there was a recommendation um, in answer to Monica's email about um, there, there, we could talk to somebody in the police department who keeps track of how many times they've been out to the house and there's some kind of nuisance point system. This was news to us. We had not heard this before. Yes, there is. There is a point system in our code which essentially at a, at a certain point will shut down, uh, whether it be a business, a house, et cetera. So- um, The police have been here at least 10 times. Okay. Minimally 10 times. Yep. And we also know from looking into the landlord that he has lived in various places in the country and he has a different name every place he lives. Yeah. So how you would hold someone who is that elusive um, right. responsible, mm -hmm. I, you know, he's been gone since last March. Right. Well, Christine, thank, thank you for you. listening to me. I'm sorry if I got a bit um, not, not exercised. At all. 
Um, no, not at all. This is your home. You deserve to live in peace. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. We really have a very, very quiet neighborhood. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> there, you know, until this occurrence, the sale of the property. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. I'll see you. Take care. Yes, you will. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Monica and uh, Sue. We'll uh, continue trying to tackle this. Um, moving along, uh, we have no local laws. We have Ordinance 87. Ordinance approving settlement of tax certiorari proceeding instituted by 700 River Street Association, LLC. On the assessment roll is City of Troy, Council President Mantello at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, Council Members Lucy, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Ordinance 87 passes, six ayes, one no. Yep. And just so folks out there are aware, all of these items have gone through quite a bit of scrutiny at a prior finance meeting. Ordinance 88, Ordinance Amending the General Fund and Capital Projects Fund Budgets. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? I have a motion. Motion, Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Ash McPherson, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 88 passes, sub nine, zero no. Ordinance 89, ordinance transferring funds within the 2020 store fund budget. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second. Council Member Ash McPherson, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 89 passes, 7 I, 0 no. Ordinance 90, ordinance transferring funds within the 2020 general fund budget. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion, Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Ash McPherson, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 90 passes seven I zero no. Ordinance 96 is withdrawn. Resolution 108, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into three-year agreement with the Nyhart Company for Actuarial Services for the fiscal years 2021, 22, and 2023. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion, Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Ash McPherson, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution 108 passes 7 I 0 no. Resolution 109, resolution accepting the 2018 financial audit, single audit of federal expenditures, and single audit of New York State Department of Transportation expenditures as prepared by the Bonadio Group. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? Like a motion. Motion, Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully, I will now turn it over to our wonderful comptroller who will walk Can us- Can I just interrupt for one minute to say there was an error on the agenda cover. You did revise the title of this resolution at the finance meeting. Uh, so I apologize for that. The correct title is resolution considering the 2019 financial audit as prepared by the Bonadio Group. Uh, but I think it does need to be revised back. Andy will let us know. Uh, anticipating, not considering. That's correct. Yeah, resolution anticipating the 2019 financial audit, single audit, et cetera. So um, before we go to Andy, I will make a motion. Um, it appears, 
Okay, uh, the title is correct. However, you'll see in the first whereas, uh, blah, 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 authorize the mayor, okay. Um, the resolution is fine as Mara indicated, so it's just the cover, so we're fine. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Andy, take it away. Thank you, Mara. So I think it was yesterday I sent out the single audits for federal and state expenditures. Um, what I'll do now is I'll put them up. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of skip to the, the main crux of this. Uh, this is the single audit of federal expenditures, um, 10 page document that the pages that matter are pages nine and 10. Um, there are th expenditure thresholds that trigger these single audits. Um, we exceeded the threshold for state and federal. For federal, uh, Bonadio very, very thoroughly tested um, internal controls and expenditures related to the seawall project. Um, this is the summary of their findings. As uh, we discussed at the finance meeting two weeks ago, there is an adverse opinion on the financial statements themselves because of the fixed assets. An unmodified opinion, which is the highest level of assurance we can receive. Um, and then as you see, as I go down here, everything is checked no. What that means is that there were no material findings or weaknesses in the city's internal controls as it relates to federal expenditures. So we got every, and you see it down here, there's no instances of material weaknesses or non-compliance. This is the highest level of assurance we can receive on our federal single audit. Um, are there any questions about this? It's all good news, that's why I'm going quick. Yep. Um, skipping over to the state. Um, this is a little different. The state triggers on the, the, the CHIPS program for street paving. Uh, no material weaknesses identified, no significant deficiencies. Uh, as you see, they tested CHIPS and paved New York. No current year findings, no prior year findings, no current year findings. The highest level of assurance we can receive on the state single audit report. So all in all, across all three audits that we had done, everything came back. At the highest level of assurance we can have with the only outstanding item is continues to be the fixed assets. Very nice, Andy. I'll open it up to members if you have any additional questions, concerns. Okay, Andy, thank you very much and a wonderful job to you and your staff. I, I do know that countless hours are put into these audits, so thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mark? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Uh, <laughs> Resolution 109 passes seven eyes, zero no. No problem. Resolution 110, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a new contract with Benetech Inc. for the purpose oh. of did you want to revise that last resolution back to accept everything? Do resolution we 108? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Sorry we, about that. That's okay. it. No, no, I'm glad. Uh, resolution 109, um, if uh, it, it did pass, if we can reconsider that vote, I will take a motion to reconsider. Motion to reconsider. Thank you, Council Member Zalewski. Uh, do I uh, have a second? Second, Council Member Cummings, I'll make a motion now to amend Resolution 109 to state accepting the 2019 financial audit. And uh, you'll see in the last, uh, therefore be it resolved, I'll make a motion to also amend that language, hereby accepts the 2019 audits. I made a motion, do we have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Zalewski on the discussion of the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? On the amended resolution 109, do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, Council Member Zalewski, do we have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Okay, amended resolution 109 passes seven ayes, zero noes. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Resolution 110, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a new contract with Benetech Inc. for the purpose of the administration of the City of Troy's health insurance program for the three year period 2021, 22, and 2023. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion, Council Member Zalewski. Do we have second? Second. Second, Council Member McDermott, was that you? Okay, thank you. Uh, my head was down. Discussion. Uh, do any Council Members have any questions? I believe uh, Marissa from Benetech has joined us. I see some lines in a curtain, but I think someone's there. Hello, Marissa. Sorry, there are technical difficulties. How are you doing? Very good. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Council President. Good. No problem. Uh, discussion. Does anyone have questions for Benetech who has joined us this evening? Okay. Further discussion? All right, I'm gonna do slow roll, Council Member Gully. Yes. Council Member Ash McPherson. Council President, um, yep. I know when we were in committee, I voted in favor of this. I have gone into different employees and spoke to different employees, not in the police department, in the work CSEA and within the fire department and so forth. Um, based on a lot of information that they were giving me, I'm gonna change my vote to a no. Council Member Steele? Yes. Council Member Cummings. Yes. Council Member Zalewski. Aye. Council Member McDermott. Yes. And Council President Mantello, I think I stated quite a bit uh, during the finance, I continue to have concerns and I would like to have explored potentially other options, so I'm a no. Resolution 110 passes, uh, five ayes and two noes. All right, Resolution 111, Resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Benetech Inc. for the purpose of the administration of the City of Troy Workers' Comp Program for the three-year period, 2021, 22, and 2023. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, Council Members Lewski, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member McDermott, discussion? Council President. Council Member Gully. Hi, Marissa, how are you? Nice Good, to see you. Good, how are you? you? Sorry, I gotta figure out how to use this mute button a little better. So uh, as you can see, there's, there's a little bit of static here when it came to the contracts um and the city was looking at each division i think the problems that a lot of the workers were expressing to the council people were based on this comp uh situation and and some of the issues that are run during comp with uh and we've heard a lot but i always believe there's three sides every story so i just i just want to know that um i know your bid was was very well placed and the, the numbers were right uh for the work that you do but is there any plan going ahead to alleviate these, these, you know, these situations that we're hearing from our workers in the city? And I know I was told it was over a two hour conversation with you guys on, on different things that need to be addressed. Could you tell us if you have any type of plan or what your focus is to kind of minimize or eliminate any issues that would hurt the employees as we've heard the stories they were hurt in the past? Yeah. So, I want to make it clear that um, we meet with the city of Troy monthly to go over um, claims, um, anything that has come up. Um, as far as what the employees are, are stating the issues are, I'm not aware of that. Um, typically in the past, union presidents had me on speed dial and contacted me anytime there was issues with the employees. Um, and we're made aware of it pretty quickly. Um, we're under such scrutiny by the comp board and we have protocols and procedures in place um, to process these claims at the end of the day. 
So without, you know, the big issue was, and from what was said in the last meeting, we're not aware of a lot of, the, of these issues. They typically, they, they come to us and your employees are not coming to us. So it's our goal to, you know, to me, we reached out to the PBA president um, for the police to set up a meeting. Um, we facilitated that through Gabrielle. Um, and we, have, we haven't heard back. Okay, so my question would be then, how do we raise that standard of communication so that we can effectively minimize these issues and efficiently uh, take care of the employees so that, you know, like when it affects their, their financial status, that's a little hard to understand. Uh, and I don't think any claim should go that far, especially in comp, but maybe you could help us out with saying what you would do to kind of better that situation. Jim, I think it's a lack of communication, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think, you know, for instance, just last week, um, I was contacted by the, um, the firefighter PBA. Um, and they said to me, gosh, Marissa, these claims are getting paid for this one individual. Why not? And it was just a situation with a provider. It was very simple. And once we contacted the provider, they sent the claims, everything was paid. Um, so I think a lot of times they're not exactly sure how things work. And if they're not working with their providers um, and, and telling them that this may be workers' compensation, we're not getting a lot of those claims to, to pay them, quite frankly. Um, so a lot of it is it's just communication. So it was our goal to, to meet with the union presidents um, going forward and say, hey, listen, this is what you need to be saying to your people. Um, this is how workers comps, you know, this is how claims are processed. This is how things are working. Do you have anything that you might in the future put out educationally wise to help the employees understand the process? Because maybe that message isn't getting to all of them the right way. You know, a molehill turns into a mountain. So is yeah. there something that maybe you could do to present some sort of, um, of direction for the employees that, hey, if this happens, contact here or contact this. Do they have that type of information readily they available? Do. They have that information. It's um, it's made available to them. Um, but we'll again, we'll work, you know, very closely with these union presidents to make sure that their their um, employees understand how it works. And again, um, we have procedures in place. There's protocols that are in place. And I, like I said before, we are under such scrutiny from the comp board. Um, we do our job very well. And when you look at our metrics and compare them, um, we know that we do a great job in the city of Troy. And again, we, we work for the city of Troy. The city of Troy is our client. Okay, well, then we should see progressively better results coming up with, if there's better communication, we'll see less aggravation and this could be a pleasant relationship moving forward. Yeah, I agree. But I, I, you know, and again, I want to make it clear that in the past, and I've had, I've been the account manager on the group for um, 17 plus years, Jim. Um, in the past, I've had union presidents have my number and I was on speed dial for them. And whenever there was an issue, I was contacted. So I just want to make it clear that I have not been contacted by anybody. And they still have your number. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, further questions, discussion? Council President, can you hear me? Council Member Cummings. Yeah, um, I guess I just wanted to maybe, could you speak to just anecdotal, I don't know what you can talk anecdotally, but obviously, in terms of the, uh, the kinds of relationships you've developed in other communities and, and how you do that and what, what we might be able to do to help uh, foster that here? Can you speak to your relationship with another union president, for example, or I don't know? Yeah, I mean, again, it's just um, we want obviously everybody to be happy. We, we want to do the best job that we can. So a lot of our groups, um, whether we're dealing with union presidents, whether we're dealing with controllers, um, HR departments, what, whatever that may be, the customer service line is always open. Um, and we make that clear. And so I want to have that open dialogue all the time with um, 
these folks to make sure that if there's something wrong, that we get to the bottom of it and we fix it. Marissa, um, you know, I, I didn't plan, but Council Member Gully kind of opened the floodgate. I guess, you know, what concerned me mostly was specific. Um, there was an incident um, that we received as one of many examples. Um, most recent, this happened on, uh, looks like September 8th of 2020, the police officer was exposed to blood from an arrested heroin addict and cut his elbow um, the prior year. He went to the ER on duty, didn't even know a case was going on, received a bill in September of this year for 620 bucks for the ER visit. Never received any paperwork from Benetech. If I'm reading the court decision correctly, Benetech failed to file paperwork accordingly and the decision was made on September 3rd, 2020. Per workers comp, I was not liable for the bill. Instead of Benetech stepping up to cover the bill, they afforded it to me. Spoke to workers comp, they took the bill and resent it to Benetech. Uh, another case, heart condition issue, April of 2016, the case was resolved and Benetech was supposed to cover the bill as agreed upon in the workers comp case. Issue finally resolved with Bantech in February of 2020, four years later, after the bill almost went to collections in this officer's name. And then one other one, currently injured hand at work in beginning of October, already receiving payment notices from Ortho New York for my doctor's appointment, mailed all the paperwork to City Hall and to Benetech personally, along with giving Ortho New York info for Benetech, Ortho New York, cannot contact Benetech, still no claim number, still no information from Benetech, we'll have to get an attorney in the matter. These are just a few cases. So, you know, you have to understand my concern when I hear specific cases from employees. And I was on the council back in 2016 when the contract to renew for Benetech at that time and one of my colleagues, council member Bodner was on the council prior for like four or five years uh, before me. And he had expressed similar concerns and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure maybe, you know, it's worked out but when these are brought to our attention it really raises a red flag and raises some major concerns. So. You know, that's my apprehension and I'm sure you don't know these cases off the back of your hand and I'm not asking for that, but you know, I, I just want you to know where I'm coming from. Thank you. And council president, I will say that, well, one, we, we can't discuss these claims in detail right now. Um, so if we wanna have a further discussion, that's something that we can certainly do at a later date. I can say that it's not as simple as saying Benetech did not do their job. That's why these claims haven't been paid. A lot of times, council president, these providers are not sending us the information or we're not getting the accident reports. And those are a few instances out of hundreds and hundreds of cases. Okay, thank you. Further questions, discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Uh, Council member Ash McPherson, Mara, you saw that you can see us, just I uh, keep forgetting. I'm thinking you can only hear us. Um, Sorry, <laughs> resolution uh, 111 passes five ayes, two noes. Thank you for joining us, Marissa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council President. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, resolution 112, resolution reappointing Bruce D to the Board of Assessment Review of the City of Troy. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? I like a motion. Motion. Council Member Zalewski, do I have a second? Second. Second. Council Member Gully, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution 112 passes, seven ayes, zero noes. 
Beautiful. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion, Council Member Zaluski. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night, everyone. It's a record. <laughs> See you all in December. <laughs>